ready for this? Okay, are you ready for this? We're going to do today the STAR Grade 8 Mathematics. And this test was given um, April 2021. And we're doing the 8th grade mathematics. And we're going to go through the problem step by step. And this will be part 1. And uh, probably do the first 14 today, 1 through 14. And then we'll have a separate video for the uh, rest of them. And, and then another part, part 3. So let's go on to problem number 1. We're looking at the formula chart that is provided for in the test. And we're looking at volume. And we're looking for volume of a sphere. And that says that volume is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. So that's the formula that we need to use for our problem here. So let's use v equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. The simple interest formula is i equals to prt. And since we're calculating interest, we're going to use that formula. P is the principal, R is the interest rate as a decimal, and T is the time in years. So let's take a look at the problem using I equals PRT. We're looking for the volume of a, of a uh, cylinder. And the volume of a cylinder, prism or cylinder, is going to be the volume is equal to capital B, which is the area of the base, times the height. And so that's the formula we're going to use. Okay, problem number one says, uh, trapezoid WKRP was translated four units to the left and five units up on a coordinate grid to create trapezoid W prime, K prime, R prime, P prime. Which rule describes the transformation? Okay, so if it's translated, it's going to slide to the left four units and then up five units. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw the xy plane. And so if this is x and this is y. And let's say that we have a point here. And we're going to move this to the left four units. And then we're going to move five units up. So to the left would be minus 4. And going up would be plus 5. So going to the left and right, that affects the x value. So from here to here, that would be x minus 4 since you're going to the left. And going up, that affects the y values, your horizontal, your, your vertical axis. So y plus 5. So if you look at your answer choices, we're looking for an answer that has x minus 4. There's one here at A. And there's also at D. But we need a y plus 5. y plus 5 would be right there. So the answer should be answer A for problem number 1. Okay, problem number two says, which representation shows y as a function of x? Well, on the first one here, you have, if you draw a vertical line, you will notice that there are actually two points, if I draw a vertical line through here, and that means that there's two values for y for one value of x. And so that is not... This will not be a function. And the same thing for this one here. If you draw a vertical line through here, uh, when x is negative 2, you get a value up here and a value down there. So there's two values of y for one value of x. So that is not a function. The vertical line test says that when you draw a vertical line through the function, you can only hit at one one spot here is hitting two points and over here it's hitting two points anywhere on a circle you're hitting two points so that is not a function 
if you look at answer H, negative 11 pairs up with 60, negative 14 pairs up with 47, and negative 17 pairs up with 34, and negative 20 pairs up with 21. So each value of X has one value of Y, and that looks by definition to be a function. So it looks like H should be the answer for number two. Just to make sure, let's look at J. 16 pairs up with 19, 18 with 21, 20 with 23. Oh, 22 is paired up with two different numbers right here, and this makes it not a function. So you have, for example, 22 comma 25 as an ordered pair for x and y. And you're also going to have 22 comma 27. So you see that the same value of x has two different values of y, and that is not allowed. It would not be a function. So the answer has to be j for number 2. Problem number 3 states that a bowling ball shaped like a sphere, has a diameter of 21.6 centimeters. So we have 21, diameter is 21.6 centimeters, okay? Which measurement is closest to the volume, so we're looking for volume, of the bowling ball in cubic centimeters? So volume would be cubic centimeters, since your diameter is in centimeters. So in this problem, we need to look at the formula chart to see what is the formula for a sphere. Okay, so here we have our formula now. V is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed, and r is the radius, and what they give us is a diameter. So how do we get the radius? Well, the radius is always going to be half the diameter. So in this problem, the radius is going to be 21.6 divided by 2. Radius is half the diameter. So we're going to have 4 divided by 3 times pi on your calculator. And then for r, we're going to use 21.6 divided by 2, and all that's going to be cubed. So in your calculator, you can take 21.6 divided by 2, 21.6 divided by 2, that's 10.8. So we're going to take 10.8 and cube that number. So raise it to the third power, and that's um, 1,259. Point seven, and we still need to multiply that by pi and also by the four-thirds. So 1,259.7 times pi and then times 4 divided by 3. So when you multiply by four-thirds, multiply by 4, divide by 3, and the answer comes out to 5,276.7. So the answer here should be answer B. Okay. And that is problem number three. So problem number three, make sure that you're able to use the radius, not the diameter, in the formula because it's four-thirds pi r cubed. And uh, then it's a matter of using your calculator correctly and get the correct answer. Okay, problem number four says a customer will borrow $12,000 to buy a car. Which loan option would allow the customer to pay the least amount of interest? Okay, so there is an interest formula on the formula chart. So let's take a look at that. So the formula is equal to I equals to PRT. And we want to find out uh, which will which of these options would be the least amount of interest. Of course, you want to pay the least amount of interest in this problem. So the principle is the amount of money borrowed, which would be 12,000. And you're going to have a four-year loan. 
and the rate for the first one is going to be 5.2 percent so 5.2 percent is 5.2 divided by 100 or if you prefer you could use 0 0.052 and the time is four years so times four years and this would be for F and then uh, we'll take a look at G G would be 12,000 is the same principle and you're gonna have 4.2 4.2 divided by 100 and times five five years and then for h we're going to have 12,000 and we're going to have 4.7 4.7 percent so it's over 100 for how many years for six years and there's one more that would be j j is going to be the same 12,000 and we're going to have 8.4%. That's kind of high. 8.4% divided by 100 is the percent. And for three years, multiply that by three. And so we'll get the least amount and see which one is the best option. So using your calculator, for answer F, we're going to have 12,000 times... 5.2 divided by 100 times 4. And that one gives us 2496. That would be $2,496 in interest. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the next one, option G, which would be 12,000 times. 4.2 divided by 100 because of the percent times 5, 5 years. That one's going to be 2,520. That's the amount of interest there. And then for H, we're going to have 12,000 times 4.7 divided by 100. That's 4.7%. And then times six, that's the number of years. And that one is going to be 3,384. It's going to be too high. And let's take a look at one more. Option J, that would be 12,000 times 8.4%. 8.4 divided by 100 times three, three years. And that's 3,024. So in this case, it looks to me the least amount of interest would be the very first one that we did. 2,496 is less than 2,520 and less than the other two are over 3,000. So that would be answer F. So this type of problem, you have to use the formula correctly which is I equals to PRT. And you have to make sure that you calculate all the numbers correctly. And remember, if it's percent, it's per 100. 5.2% 5 was 5.2 over 100. And then 4 was the number of years. And uh, answer F is the correct answer here. Which table represents a non-proportional relationship between X and Y? So here we're looking for a non-proportional relationship between x and y. If one is non-proportional, then there's three that are proportional between x and y. And typically, you might have something like y is equal to kx, where k is your uh, sum ratio proportion between y and x. That would mean that you're multiplying something times x to get y. And so, if we take a look at the answers here, 
when x is 1, y is negative 4, and when x is 3, y is negative 12, and then 7, and then 15. So um, if you take y and divide it by x, that should be a constant. And in this case, um, if we take y and divide it by x, four, negative 4 divided by 1 is a negative 4. And if you take negative 12 divided by 3, we're dividing y divided by x, that's also negative 4. Negative 28 divided by 7 is negative 4. So this is a constant proportional relationship. So here, k is actually negative 4. So could a be the answer? No, we're looking for a non-proportional. So a cannot be the answer. And we can take a look at uh, answer B. And on this one, maybe you can take a calculator and take 93.5 and divide it by negative 17, and you get negative 5.5. I'm dividing y divided by x, because y divided by x gives us that uh, ratio of proportionality. 27.5 divided by negative 5. Same thing, negative 5.5. 11, negative 11 divided by 2 is also negative 5.5. And negative 55 divided by 10 is also negative 5.5. Same as A, B cannot be a non-proportional relationship. It is proportional. And then it's down to C and D. Um, 7.5 divided by 1, that's 7.5. 30 divided by 4, that's 7.5. Again, I'm dividing y divided by x. And 52.5 divided by 7 is the same thing. And this is the same thing, 7.5. So it cannot be c. So it must be d. And here you see that 11 divided by 5 is not the same as negative 1 divided by negative 1. And negative 7 divided by 1. So when you divide here y divided by x you're not getting the same constant. You're getting different numbers. This is called a non-proportional relationship. Non-proportional. So the answer should be D. And so in this case, we have to go through every single one and just double check and make sure the answer was D. These types of problems require patience and you do have to take your time. And in this test, this is not a speed test. Take your time, work your way through it, and make sure you get the right answer. Okay, problem number six, a triangle TRW is shown on the coordinate grid. And in this problem, we have a triangle be dilated by a scale factor of N. So right here, a scale factor of N with the origin as a center of dilation to create a triangle T prime, R prime, W prime. Which ordered pair best represents the location of point R prime? Okay, so what happens is when you have a scale factor of n, you're multiplying the coordinates by n. And in this problem, you have to multiply the x coordinates and the y coordinates by n. And so if we look at the answer choices, answer f, they're dividing by n, so that's not correct. Uh, G, they're multiplying by N, okay? And if we look at H, they're adding N, that's not correct. And then J, they are subtracting N. So it looks to me like the correct answer has to be G, negative 3N and negative 5N. So in this case, the answer was G. Problem number seven. A student's parents invested $5,000 in a college savings account that pays 4.85% annual simple interest. No additional deposits or withdrawals will be made. Which account is closest to the interest earned at the end of 15 years? So we're looking for interest. And we already know that the interest is... PRT, principal, times the rate, times time. And so in this case, the principal is the amount invested, which is $5,000. 
and the interest rate was 4.85%, so that's per 100. And T is the time in years, and in this case it was 15. So times 15 years, times 15. So let's take your calculator, multiply 5,000 times 4.85 divided by 100 times 15, and you get 3,000. Six hundred and thirty seven dollars and fifty cents. And so that is the interest earned. I is the interest, okay? And so if you look at your answers choices, answer C is the correct answer. And notice that there's another answer, answer D. It looks similar, but it's five thousand more. Okay? Because the original five thousand has been added. And so they're not asking for the total amount. They're only asking for the interest earned. Now, if they wanted the uh, total amount, maybe on a different test, the total amount of money includes the principal, which is the 5000 plus the interest. And if they were asking for the total, then answer D would have been correct. But since we're only looking for the interest, I, the answer is C. So C is the correct answer here. Okay, question number eight is a question that has to do with transformations. And we have triangle XYZ is rotated 90 degrees clockwise, okay, about the origin to form a new triangle, X prime, Y prime, Z prime. When you rotate this triangle, and you rotate it clockwise 90 degrees, does, this, does the triangle change in size? No. If there's a reflection, does it change in size? No. If there's a translation, the translation means it would slide left, right, up, or down. There's nothing, no change. But if it's a dilation, it's a resize, and it's no longer congruent. So in this question, we want to know which statement is true about the given information, okay? So answer F says that the sum of the angle measures of triangle XYZ is 90 degrees less than the sum of the angle measures of the new triangle, X prime, Y prime, Z prime. Well, that can't be true because regardless of the triangle, it's always gonna have 180 degrees for the sum of the angle measures. So it's 180 even if you rotate it, or translate it, any triangle is 180. So this cannot be true. So we're going to eliminate answer F. Now, for answer G, it says the angle measures of triangle XYZ are less than the corresponding angle measures of triangle. Well, corresponding angles will still be the same measures. They're not going to change in size. So it can't be G. Um, triangle XYZ is not congruent to triangle X prime, Y prime, Z prime. Well, we just said that the triangle, when you rotate it, it's not going to change in, in size. It'll still be a triangle. It'll still be congruent. So... This one doesn't make a lot of sense either, so we have to eliminate that. Now, the last answer has to be correct. The area of triangle XYZ is equal to the area of triangle X prime. If the triangles are congruent, and they are because when you rotate it's still the same size and same shape, then the areas will still be the same. So that is a true statement. So for number eight, the answer is J. And once again, this type of question, you have to go through all of the answers and you try to see which is true, which is false. And if they're asking for a true statement like they are in this case, that means that three of them will be false and only one of them is true. 
It was answer J in this case. A college has two classrooms of students. Classroom A has 70 students and classroom B has 30 students. Classroom A sent groups of four to classroom B until both classrooms had the same number of students. The equation shown below is used to find the number of groups that classroom A sent to classroom B so that they had the same number or equal number of students. So they're sending four students in a group, so minus 4x here, and then they're picking up 4x here. So how many groups did they send from A to B? Record your answer. So this is not a multiple choice question. So we need to solve 4x. What is the value of x here? Okay. Okay, so we have 70 minus 4x is equal to 30 plus 4x. So what we need to do is combine the x's on one side. If I have minus 4x here, I'm going to add 4x here to cancel that. And I'm going to have to add 4x here. So whatever you add on one side, you add to the other side. And also, I want to get all the numbers on the same side. So if I have the x's on the right-hand side, I want to have the numbers over to the left-hand side. So that means this 30 has to go to the other side. So I'm going to do a minus 30 here and a minus 30 there. And by doing that, we know that the x's will cancel and the 30 minus 30, those will cancel. So what's left here? We're going to have 8x, 4x plus 4x is 8x, and that is equal to 70 minus 30, which is 40. So now we know that x times 8 is 40, so if you divide by 8 here, what's 40 divided by 8? It looks like x should be 5. And 5 is the correct answer. You record your answer and then you bubble in in your answer document. 5 is the correct answer here. Okay, so problem number 10 says that a water tank currently contains 275 gallons of water. The amount of water in the tank will decrease. So it'll decrease at a constant rate of 15 gallons per week. So every week they're going to lose 15 gallons. So you're starting with 275 and then you're going to lose 15 after the first week, 275, and then 15 times 2 for the second week, and so on and so on. So 3 times 15 for the third week. So you're going to have 275 minus 15w for the number of weeks. Okay, Which function can be used to find t, the total number of gallons, of water in the tank after W weeks. Well, we know that we start with 275 as a fixed number, so we're going to have 275 minus 15 for each week that they lose. So we need an answer that looks like 275 minus 15W. And there's 275 minus 15, but it doesn't have, it's not in the right order. This one's not in the right order. Um, so it looks like it could be F or G. But we start off with 275, and then we have minus 15W. Isn't that the same thing as minus 15W plus 275? Yes, it's the same thing. So then that would be answer G. T equals to negative 15W plus 275. So number 10, the answer is G. Number 11, a scatter plot shows the height in centimeters and weight in kilograms of several students. So the height is your y-axis. No, that's the weight. The height is your x-axis. Based on this scatter plot, which is the best prediction of height in centimeters of a student that weighs 164 64 kilograms. Okay, 64 kilograms. So what we need to do is look at 64 kilograms, and we're going to draw a line all the way across 64 kilograms. And so then we need to find the line 
of best fit, a line that goes through all of these points. And I'm going to say that if I draw a line through here, goes through there, it's going to hit somewhere in there. And then draw the line very straight, but it hits in the middle of most of those points. The green line would be a line of best fit. Now, to find to find the uh, the height, then it looks like this line might intersect right here. And so what we're going to do is draw a line straight down through here. And it looks like your answer should be between 154 and 158. It looks like somewhere between 154 and 158. Is there an answer between 154 and 158? So 162 is too high. 160 is too high, 150 is too low. 156 falls right in that range. So it looks like for number 11, the answer should be D. So for this problem, just draw a line straight up through in between uh, all the dots, uh, your scatter plots, and then draw a horizontal line for the height, and then draw where they intersect, draw a line all the way down to find the height. And uh, the answer was D for number 11. Okay, number 12 is also another transformation question. And we talked about this a little bit on the previous problem. A transformation is applied to a figure to create a new figure on a coordinate grid. Which transformation does not, does not preserve congruence? Okay, so we're looking for one that does not preserve congruence. Okay. And so a rotation, uh, if you have a triangle and you rotate the triangle, it's still the same triangle. So it's not going to be answer F. A reflection means you just flip it. So if you have a triangle here and you flip it across the y-axis, it's still the same triangle. So that'll still be congruent. A dilation by scale factor 1.5, that means it's increased by a factor 1.5. So you're multiplying the dimensions by 1.5. And so that means that uh, it will change. It will no longer be congruent. It will no longer be the same size. So it should be answer H. J says a translation of 50 units down. So if you just move a triangle 50 units down, it's still the same triangle. They're still congruent. So it can't be answer J. So the correct answer for number 12 was H, a dilation by a scale factor of of these four different transformations, only when you multiply by a scale factor does it actually change the congruence. They're no longer congruent. It's the only one. The other three, rotation, reflection, translation, they will still maintain and preserve their congruence. So that was for number 12. For number 13, a teacher bought markers at a cost of $3 per set. So $3 for each set and had a coupon of $2 off, okay, to use towards the total cost of the markers. Which table shows the relationship between X, the number of markers bought by the teacher, and Y, the total cost of the markers? So here's the number of sets, and here's the total cost. So if you pay $3 per set, you multiply the X times 3, so 3 times 3 is 9, minus 2 for the coupon, that's 7. 9 times 3 is 27, minus 2. 12 times 3 is 36, minus 2. 12 times 3, 72, minus 2. It looks like the answer is A. And so all we're doing is multiplying the X times 3. So we're doing 3 times X and then minus 2. So on your calculator, if you wanted to check, you could graph y equals to 3x minus 2 and look at the table of values and match it with the correct table. In this case, we know the answer is going to be a. Here they're doing 3x plus 2, 3x plus 2, 3x plus 2, 3x plus 2. That is not correct. 
In answer D, I'm not sure what they're doing. They're dividing by 3, 9 divided by 3, and then add 2. In answer B, that doesn't make any sense either. So the correct answer is A. And so you can check by plugging into the equation, or you can just multiply each x times 3 and subtract 2, and that gives you the total cost for this one. Problem, Problem number 14, 14 is going to be, be the last, the last one, one in this, in this section. section. The, the diameter, diameter of a cylinder, cylinder is 2.5 inches, inches, and the, and the height, height is 7.5 inches. inches. Which, Which equation, equation can be, can used, be used to find, to find v, the volume, volume of the cylinder, cylinder in cubic, cubic inches? inches. We need to we refer, refer to our, to our formula, formula chart, chart unless, unless you have you the have formulas, formulas already memorized, memorized but, but there's no there's need no to need memorize, to memorize them. them. So the formula is the volume is equal to the area of the base times the height, and B is the area of the base. So a cylinder has a circular base, and so you're going to have, this is the radius, and so the area of the base is pi r squared, the area of a circle. And so in this case, we're going to have pi r squared for the other base times the height. And we don't have the radius, but we have the diameter. And we know the radius is half the diameter. So we're going to have to do pi and then take 2.5 divided by 2 and square that. And then multiply it by the height. And the height was 7.5. Now... 2.5 divided by 2 is actually 1.25. That's our radius. So if our radius is 1.25, we're looking for 1.25 squared. And it looks like it's right here. Pi times 1.25 squared times a height 7.5. The answer is going to be H for this one. So number 14, the answer is H. I hope you've learned something today in this video. I'm going to pause it here. This is the conclusion of part one for the eighth grade uh, star test.